Hey everybody, welcome. I am so glad that you are here hanging out with us today, whether you are here in the classroom or whether you are sitting there on the couch with your family, so excited. We are gonna be looking at Acts chapter three and four, and we're gonna see that Jesus's power helps us to be bold. Now, have you ever thought what it would be like if you couldn't walk? I mean, you wouldn't be able to play sports, you wouldn't be able to have a job, you wouldn't be able to just go out and play and go down the sidewalk. That would just be crazy. I mean, how would you get around? You would have to have somebody carry you everywhere you went because you wouldn't be able to walk. Now, today we're gonna to be looking at a Bible story where Peter and John actually come in contact with a man who couldn't walk for 40 years. Now back then, it was a little different than it is today. I mean, today we have crutches and we have a wheelchair and we have cars. They didn't have all of that back then. So the only way that this person would have been able to get anywhere was if one of his friends or family members actually picked him up and carried him where he needed to go. Now, I don't know about you, but I've carried people around before and oh my gosh, it is so tiring. I lose my breath and I get tired and I gotta put them down and then I gotta pick them back up and it's a lot of work. And we're gonna love looking at this story today, but you know what, before we do that, what do you say we jump up, we sing some songs and we play a super fun game. Here we go. Kids, welcome back to another edition of CS Kids Games. Today, we are gonna be playing a little game of Pictionary. Maybe you've played it at home. Basically, I will be drawing something out of my own mind. Braden has to guess what I'm drawing. Your job is to try to guess what I'm drawing before Braden does. Are you ready, Braden? Yes. All right, the first item. Uh, you tell yet? Thanos. <laughs> No, it is not Thanos. Uh, Pastor Len! 
Uh, that is an ice cream cone. Is it? That is... Is that Australia? <laughs> that is a... Is that a cat? Close. It's a, it's a dog. It is a dog. Good job, Brayden. Did you get it before he did? Oh, I bet you I did. I, I bet you did. All right, there's his little eyes. I just gotta finish him up really quick. Oh yeah, Let's for sure, back. for sure. Uh, the next item. Okay. That is Planet Earth. No. That is, is that Pastor Lynn? No. <laughs> um, that's an orange. It is an orange. Good job. Did you get it before he did? It's hard when you can't color it orange. That is, you know that me? is black true. and white orange is tough. Did they name orange because it's the color is orange, or is it just orange? Next up, that is that Pastor Lynn. Nope. Okay. Is that an onion? Nope. Is that a peach? No. That is. Uh, is that Black Widow? It is not. Okay. Is that um, a tree? A, a. It is not a tree. Is it an angel? Uh, no. It is. Is it David? Nope. Moses. You're getting closer. Joseph. Nope. Is it? Um, he has a beard. That'll give it away. Noah. Nope. He has a beard. Elisha. Uh. Um. God? Jesus? Yes, it is Jesus himself. All right, you guys. Well, thank you for watching another edition of CS Kids Games. Let me know if you beat Brayden. See you guys next time. Wow, you guys, that was so awesome. You were jumping around like crazy, singing some great songs. Wasn't that game fun? I know I had a blast. Okay, so did you get tired? Now, could you imagine how tired you would be if you were carrying your friend around everywhere they needed to go? Well, today we're looking at that story where Peter and John were out and about and they were actually walking around in Jerusalem. And they happened to walk by the temple gate. And there at the temple gate, there was a man who had actually been crippled for 40 years. He could not walk anywhere. People had to carry him everywhere he had to go. So here he was at the temple gate, and this was normal for him. He would actually sit there because he didn't have a job and he couldn't go do anything else. So he would sit there and he would put his hand out and he would ask for coins. Some people would be nice enough to give him a coin, but others, they would just walk right on by and they would just ignore him completely. But today, Peter and John were walking by this very man and they stopped. And this man put his hand out for a coin just like he would any other day but he was about to receive something he never expected. So as he put his hand out, he said, silver and gold, please. And Peter leaned in and he said, silver and gold I don't have, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus, stand and walk. Oh my gosh, what an amazing gift that would be. Way better than silver and gold, or is it? Why don't you guys take a moment and discuss if you think that this gift is better than silver and gold and why? And then maybe we'll watch a short little skit. I heard some great news this morning. Cam and his crew were able to fix the track. Now they'll be able to go down the mountain and deliver all those M&Ms. Did I hear my name? Did, did someone say my name? Are you cheering for me? Yes, we are. We heard that you fixed the tracks. Are you ready to deliver all those M&Ms? Oh yeah, can't wait. So excited, yeah. Oh, look, a squirrel. Cam, are you hiding? Uh. If you see a train conductor, can you tell him that I went to, um, uh, ooh, water my lawn? Cam, I don't know why you're hiding, but if you could just come out, tell us what's going on. We can probably help you. Ooh, you're right. Maybe I should wear a disguise. What do you think? Unless being disguised as a tree is what you're going for, I don't think so. Just tell us what's going on. 
Well, the conductor reminded me that before we get down the mountain, we have to go up and over a really steep one. And now he's trying to find me so we can get rolling, you know, full steam ahead. But I thought that's what you wanted to do, delivering the M&Ms and all. It is, it's just, I've never gone down such a steep mountain before. I've gone over little hills and on long plains and around crazy curvy bends and super tall bridges, but I'm really nervous about going up and then back down such a steep mountain. Hmm. Doing new things takes courage and boldness, but I'm glad that I don't have to do it alone. Jesus' power helps us be bold, and you don't have to use your own strength. You can be sure that the one strong enough to create the mountains is strong enough to help you get over them. That sounds nice, but I'm still nervous. Well, we have some new songs that can help your situation, and it's all about Jesus' power and helping us be bold. Oh, okay, that, that might actually help a lot. Uh, I'll stay here while you guys sing and remind me of the power of Jesus, and then I'll go find the train conductor and tell him I'm ready. Thanks, guys. We believe in you, Cam. Hope you guys had some great discussions. Thank you so much for doing that. Now, what do you think happened after Peter told this man who had been crippled for 40 years to stand up and walk? Well, Peter put his hand out, he grabbed the man's hand, and the man stood up and started jumping around like crazy and praising and worshiping God. Now that takes some real boldness, which is exactly what we're looking at today, that Jesus' power can give us boldness. So what do you think happened next? This boldness, actually this miracle started to go throughout all of Jerusalem and people wanted to hear more. So Peter and John, they once again, through the power of Jesus, had the boldness to start sharing who Jesus was to everyone that was there. They told them about Jesus and that he would forgive them of our sins and we all had sins that needed to be forgiven. And he told them about what he had done on the cross. But the problem was there were people there that didn't really like Jesus. In fact, some people thought Jesus was a liar and that meant that anyone who believed in Jesus was a liar too. So some of the leaders right there in town decided that they were going to come and they were going to arrest Peter and John. 
So you know that makes me think, what would be a time or a place where it would be hard for you to maybe tell other people about Jesus and to have that boldness? Take a moment and discuss that with those who are around you. Great, great, great discussions, you guys. So glad that you were willing to have the boldness to talk with people right there around you about what God's doing. So what happens? Continuing on with our story. These leaders in Jerusalem, they were so mad and so upset with Peter and John that they arrested them and they threw them in prison. And so they were there all night long. The next morning, the leaders brought Peter and John before them. And they told them that they had to stop talking about Jesus. But here's the thing. Peter and John knew that people needed to hear about Jesus. And so they told the leaders, once again with boldness, do you really think that we're going to obey you instead of Jesus? We know that people need to hear the word of Jesus, and so we are going to do exactly that. Of course, the leaders didn't like this, but there was nothing they could do because everybody in Jerusalem had seen the miracle and they knew that if they threw Peter and John back in prison, it was gonna be a bigger problem. So they let Peter and John go and they left and they went to see their friends. Now, very, very important question here. Can you remember who it was that shared Jesus with you? Or maybe is there someone in your life that you could share Jesus with? Why don't you take a moment and discuss that? Meet Lauren. She's your pretty typical kid. She loves Legos and animals. These are freshwater fish. Mine is peaches. My brother's is green lantern. My sister's is Uma. She loves learning. My favorite subject in school is writing. I did write. This is kind of like a comic book. She also loves cruising around her basement on her scooter and bouncing on trampolines. Lauren also serves Jesus in a big, bold way by serving at her local food kitchen. I saw all the people who didn't have food, so I wanted to help them. My first time I served in community kitchen, I tried it in California, and I wanted to do it here. So I told my mom, and she found a place, and she said I can go. First thing, she meets with her crew to get a plan for the day. It feels nice and it feels like God want me to do this because it's important that people who don't have very much things that we need to care for them. I am the drink and dessert person. When I do desserts, I walk back and forth taking down desserts and putting them on a table. Once everything is set up, they say a prayer before everyone is served. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the food. It's time to start serving. When they start, we have to pour the drink. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow, isn't it cool to see Lauren's boldness as she serves and meets all these grown-ups? You're welcome. We serve juice, we serve milk, and we serve coffee, hot chocolate. It makes me feel bold when I show them that I care about them and that they are important and that we should care for them. And they're always happy when I'm there. That makes me feel good. Welcome. You're doing a great job. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Lauren enjoys serving so much, she invites others to serve with her. My brother wants to go with me, so he'll come next time. In the Bible, the book of Isaiah tells us, He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. God has given me the power to show people that they matter and that it's kind to care for people who need stuff and who are just on the streets, who don't have food, who don't have homes. They need stuff and I got the power from God to show them that they matter. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Okay, so do you realize that Peter and John, because of their boldness and because they were willing to stand up to the leaders and to talk about Jesus and obey Jesus, that over 5,000 men believed in Jesus that day? And that's just men. That doesn't even include the women and the children. We're talking a lot of people were able to hear about Jesus. What an incredible opportunity they had, and you and I have too, with those very people that we were just talking about that we could share Jesus with. Now, the rest of our story. So Peter and John, they were let free. They left and they went to their friend's house. Well, once they got there, they told their friends everything that had happened. And you know what their friends did for them? They prayed that they would have boldness and courage to keep sharing the message of Jesus. You see, sometimes it does take boldness and courage to be able to talk about Jesus. Maybe it's with our friends, maybe it's out playing in the neighborhood, uh, whatever it may be, it takes boldness and courage. But just like Peter and John had friends there to support them and to pray for them, you and I have friends that are there to support us and to pray for us so that we can have the courage and the boldness to stand up and to talk about Jesus anytime we have the opportunity, just like Peter and John. In fact, what do you say I pray for us right now that we would have the courage and boldness to stand up for Jesus? Lord, thank you so much. God, we just pray that you would give each and every one of us the courage and the boldness through your power to be able to stand up and to be able to talk about you with anyone that you put in our path. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.